I'll tell you a different story. This story is about a propeller, this particular one. So the major components, we're talking about the Hamilton Standard 2 position prop and system components. Well, we had the spider, I mentioned that. Spider, that's your central component. Slides over a spline shaft, has yeah, two or three arms, depending on how many components you have. That was back this slide right there, the spider. Um, of course, we have the blades, which I don't have a picture of, but we've seen plenty of blades. Spider, we have the blades. Uh, let's see. Uh, they're pretty usually aluminum. They say that some of the really early models were wood. I've never seen one. Of course, we have the counterweight assembly. And every time we see a counterweight assembly, we know that centrifugal twisting force makes the propeller go to high blade, high blade, high blade angle. angle. Okay. Um, we have the hub assembly. They are, it is a matched set. So we have uh, two steel halves. That, jeez. That are a matched set. So in other words, if you accidentally damage the front half, you must buy a whole new one. And of course, that's going to contain the bearings, spacers, everything else. And it goes over on top of the spider. The spider's on the inside. And then you have the cylinder and piston assembly. We don't need to write all this. The piston threads through the cylinder onto the crankshaft and actually holds the prop onto the engine. Let's take a look at a picture. The cylinder, sorry, the piston, the piston, the piston, which is on the inside, piston threads through the cylinder onto the crankshaft, actually holds the prop on the engine. The cylinder is sealed around the piston. The cylinder, that's the outside, is sealed around the piston. Uh, the cylinder slides along a stationary piston. So you have the cylinder goes back and forth, as we saw in the other diagram we looked at. Um, and then once it's secured, you put the cap on. There's the cap for the cylinder head, creating an oil tight seal. So if that isn't sealed, oil will leak out of there. I love the, uh, the torque, so I quoted it. The torque is, quote, applying a force of, I thought you were gonna say 140. What was the other one, 100? What, 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 the man, what size? Oh, 175. 175. Well, this is a bigger prop, so we got to get a 150 pound person now. Notice it's no longer a man. So anybody will work. 150, 180, 180 pounds at the end of a four foot bar while applying a force, quote, strike the bar close to the wrench with a hammer weighing about two and a half pounds. <laughs> so there you go. All right, and then we have these things called Welch bolts. This will be your introduction to Welch bolts. F, Welch bolts. It is in fact a hollow bolt. <clears throat> There's a hollow bolt that allows a mechanic to fill the void with lead wool. You should see the sheep that create lead wool. Lead wool, and that is for balancing purposes. So if your prop is out of balance, you can shove lead wool into these welch plugs um, and mm. then seal the bolt up here so the lead does not come out, obviously. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Let's 
I got a picture of the Could be these bolts up here on the hub. I can't see them. So yeah, that'll be a question I'll ask you on your practical. Hey, what is that? And they're welch bolts. Welch bolts. Let me see. Uh, filled with lead wool. You ever seen steel wool? I mean, that used to be a big thing, you know, for cleaning and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Same thing, it's just made out of lead. And obviously it's heavier. Um, since I'm on that subject, there is a thing called a dry balance when we talk about props. Dry balance, that is balanced with no grease. Now I'm sure there's somebody who's going to go in here and go up to the parts counter and, hey, I need to order some NO grease. Why do you want NO grease? Well, Kevin said we're supposed to dry balance it with NO grease. Sorry, that's my joke. On oxygen systems, it always says use no oil. Use no oil. It says that on every oxygen system, on every gauge, it says use no oil. Because what happens when you put oil on oxygen threads with high pressure oxygen screwed together. Huh? It gets a little explodey. <laughs> yeah, it's very bad. It can, it can yeah, it's, so I don't know. I had to fill my oxygen bottle and so I took it in. I'm like, hey, do you have any NO oil? He's like, for what? I'm like, well, it says right on there, use NO oil. And I don't know. He, he just, I don't know. I can see if I have some back here. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll order it on Amazon. <laughs> okay, wet balance. That's balanced with grease in it. So. Balanced with grease. And then I wrote a note here. I'll just tell you, on movable props, make sure you are very careful with grease. So use caution with grease. Follow instructions there. Follow instructions. I was going to say perfectly, or, but you should always do that. Never overfill. Do not fill unevenly. Follow instructions. Do not overfill. Do not overfill. We talked about that. Um, do not um, unevenly fill. Equal strokes per blade. Otherwise, you're going to get into an imbalance condition. All right, adjustments. I'm just deciding if I'm going to sneeze or not. So that's what I'm waiting on. All right, so adjustments on these props, it's kind of interesting. And this is the way it works. When you unscrew the cap on the counterweight, this is what you find on the inside. There is this particular bolt right here with these nuts. This is a nut and that's a nut and they screw up and down and up and down. So that adjusts your minimum and maximum blade angles or high pitch and low pitch stops right there, which would be different for every aircraft engine combination. So it's done by adjusting these stop nuts right there. There's a scale in here and the scale, 0 to 5 and 6 to it means nothing, um, except that it's half degree imp increments. So other than, I'll write that down. Other than being half degree increments, it's like you don't, they're just arbitrary, I guess you could say, or just for reference. So, um, but you can't 
roll this up to two and go, well, that's two degrees. It's just every one of those notches is about half a degree. So, all right, so let me write that part and we'll move on. So adjustments, so minimum and max blade angles must be adjusted. So minimum and max blade angles. be set on constant speed props some props you can set the low pitch stop which would be if your engine is going past red line you as a mechanic have access to a nut on the front that would adjust the low pitch stop easily enough so it'll allow the prop to flatten out a little bit on most most constant speed props we do it right at the governor and you don't mess with that one so you follow the manual, but usually you don't have to mess with that stuff. It's rare that you get an airplane comes in like, well, I'm going to mess with the low pitch stops. I've only had done it one time. And uh, most of the time you can just do it right at the governor. If you have some governor movement, just go with the governor. But we'll get into that. Uh, so minimax bless reset. This is done. This is done by adjusting stops. Oops. By adjusting Stops located under the counterweight cap. Counterweight cap. There we go. Um, the, the scale is marked in one half degree increments. Nope, sorry. Marked in, marked in degree and half degree. The numbers are arbitrary. Not really arbitrary because they're lined up in numerical order. Uh, numbers are arbitrary and do not correspond to a specific setting. It's a reference. You still want a reference. Otherwise, you're trying to measure things. And so if you have one side at 2 and 7, you'd want the other side at 2 and 7. But you can't go at it going, well, you know, this book says 2 and 7. So, all right. Um, the, there's a base setting. So the base setting, base setting is stamped. inside the cap or not inside the cap but yeah inside the cap from last overhaul so that looks like i'll go back right there there's your base setting stamped into overhaul so there you go so now the numbers don't become quite so arbitrary and they actually have a meaning It's a base setting. This is number. I'll show you. So it's like 25. So base setting stamped inside the cap. So here's my adjust. So adjustment example. All right. So let's say that the aircraft calls for um, a setting of blade angles to be at 17 and 22 degrees. Now, the one thing to note about that, and I don't know where this example came from, but it's not something I made up. You're not talking about a whole lot of degree change in these blades. You know, don't think that you're going to see something changing huge numbers because that's uh, five degrees, right? Mm -hmm. And so for each degree, we're talking about, was it 60 to 90 RPM? Mm -hmm. So we could do easy numbers. We could just... Okay, 300 RPM or more. So that's a lot. 
All right, so we're supposed to have 17 and 22. Oh, by the way, 17 would be the higher low pitch. Okay, that's low. So 22 would be the high. All right, um, we had on that example, we had a base setting of 25. Now this has to be done at overhaul because every prop's gonna be a little bit different, so that's why it's gonna that's why you have to have that number. So it's quite simple. Twenty-five minus seventeen is gonna equal eight, right? So one nut is at eight. One nut is at eight, and we have twenty-five minus twenty-two is Thank you, three, so one nut is at three. So eight and three. So go back to our picture. One nut's gonna roll down to eight, the other one's gonna roll up to three, and boom, there you are. Hmm. Are we done? Probably not. Probably not. Verify angles. with a protractor. Uh, both high and low. Adjust stops as needed. And the tolerance I got in this one is plus or minus 0 0.3 degrees of low blade angle and plus minus 0 0.2 of each other. And let's see, plus minus 0 0.1 of high blade angle. Inspection, what would you do? Check for cracks. Okay. Grease leaking out of things. That was what I was going to say. That would be the number one thing on constant speed props or changeable props. It's leaks. Leaks will show up before cracks. And often a leak is an indication of a crack. And that's a really bad thing. Oh. All right. So that's your controllable props. We talked about a couple of them. Ground adjustable. No pilot input. No pilot input. But you have a range. The copper. The aromatic. No pilot input. Coppers. I think it really is an M. Like Google Roulette. Google it. it is coppers. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, the school thinks that's porn. All right, aromatic pilot inputs are none. Does it all on its own. This one is the beach roby and pilot input. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. One of two ways, either by motor or little crank. If you remember, it turns this right here, the, the big ring, the little, little gear, then the big gear turns. That takes um, bearings to go in and out. Um, oh, by the way, I did take a minute to take apart the uh, Ivo prop because you guys weren't curious enough. It's just sitting right there. Would you walk in? The, 
the classroom is a very small prop. And by the way, that airplane that I showed you, that, the little blue mi mini plane I was talking about, that has an IVO prop on it. So it is ground adjustable. There's a very large nut in the front. And you turn that in and take a look at it. Just pull the back off. And it looks like it's got rods that go the length of the carbon fiber blade. And so that rod just takes a twist and twists the blades. Oh, I've done it. And, yeah. And it sounds like you're breaking it. When it's mounted up and you're doing that, it just cracks and creaks. And like, it can't be good. But, all right. So we had two adjustments. Then we have the Hamilton Standard 2 position. And this one uses forces, unlike, well, aromatic uses a lot of different forces. We won't get into that one. Um, the, two, the forces involved in this are centrifugal twisting force forces it to Counterweights always say it's going to high. Counterweights are for feathering. You said centrifugal. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly centrifugal what Centrifugal counterweights goes to high. Centrifugal force causes low angle or flat? If it has counterweights, that's true. If it doesn't, okay. so that's a worthy of a, a minute here. So if you have a prop like this, even this one, the forces acting on this blade are going to try and bring it this way. But it doesn't move, so it's going to stay that way. But if this was a prop that rotated, it, it changed angle at all, without counterweights, it's always going to want to go flat. The centrifugal twisting force wants to make it go flat. But if I had a counterweight to it, counterweight, the counterweight's always going to want to twist it. So the counterweight, in this particular picture, the counterweight wants to go up, not, not down here, wouldn't want to do that, it wants to go up, and because of the way it's attached, it's going to make that blade go to a higher angle. So the centrifugal twisting force, if you will, or yeah, is greater on the counterweight than it is on the blade, which is somewhat hard to imagine, but because that blade weighs so much more, but just the way it's positioned out there gives it more of a lever and rotates it towards high. So centrifugal twisting force forces the blade to Normally low, in this case high. high angle, this particular prop. And what brings it to low angle? Engine oil pressure. Engine oil pressure. We got it? Everybody's got to get that so we can move on. You got it, Nick? You good? Yeah. You good? Okay. All right. All right, that puts us right into talking about constant speed props. So you now have a basic understanding of how props work, centrifugal twisting force, counterweights and all that and, and pressure, but we need to talk about governors because governors are the brains of the counterweights, the uh, constant speed prop system. So we're talking about prop governors. And what is a prop governor? Well, there's several different types right here. Like this one is just electrically driven. This one's got by a cable, and that one's just a cable in a different way. So, so governors. The purpose. The governor is an RPM, that's revolutions per minute, sensing device which responds to a change in engine RPM change in engine RPM by directing oil pressure to or from the prop.
to or from the prop to change blade angle. And we could add a constant speed prop. Constant speed prop holds the engine RPM constant. Constant um, by varying prop pitch. The RPM, RPM will be constant regardless of aircraft speed or throttle setting. To a point. To a point. I gotta add that. Because at some point you're just gonna pull the throttle back so far that it's like oh, I can't do anything for you. It's on its low pitch stops and it's as flat as it goes. And we'd want it that way because it'd be terrible if I started up my aircraft and it went to 2,400 RPM and there's nothing I could do about it. Well, that's just the way it is. Got a governor, you know. <laughs> well, how do you land it? Well, you don't. <laughs> Resting wire. You'd have to put one of those coup switches on it, like the old timing. Oh, yeah, there was more to that story I was telling you yesterday. <laughs> yeah, there's more to it. Did he get the new engine? As far as I know. Uh, because. Did I unpause? Or was I paused? You I didn't pause it. You were yeah. unpaused. Oh. I was recording the whole time? No, no, no. Oh. You paused it. You just unpaused it. You were paused. Oh. I don't know. It's technology. Help me. All right. Okay, good. It is hot in here, I think. All right, let's talk a little bit about how this works here. So first thing we want to do is get a little bit familiar with our, if you want to just dim the lights for a little bit while I do this, maybe that's helpful. I don't know. Is it very hot in here to you as well? Yeah. All the memories of that situation. Nah. Um, I'm drinking hot coffee too. So, all right, so we have our controls. The black one is for? Throttle. 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 The blue one is for the? Throttle. Yes. And the red one is for? Mixture. Mixture. And so, right now, what position is the mixture in? Idle cutoff. Idle cutoff. Engine is not operating. Throttle is? All the way back. Look at the RPM. That's how we know it's not operating. And the prop is in the? High RPM, which means what for the pitch control? Low pitch. All right. So the propeller governor is a very simple thing. It's actually quite cool in that all it does is it takes engine oil, runs it through a secondary oil pump, boosts that pressure up somewhere over 200 PSI. I think in my notes I wrote like 150 to 275, but I think they go way over that too. Um, so it's gonna boost that pressure up and it's gonna do something with that pressure. It's either going to drain it off and not use it or send it to the prop, all right? So inside of there, there is a pilot valve. Now this pilot valve goes up and down and it goes up and down based upon these flyweights. And so what flyweights are, right there you can see it, flyweights are these little weights that will react to centrifugal force. 
So I'll talk about it like this. So they're little flyweights. And there's a spring pressing down on those flyweights. So if the spring pressure is more than, than the flyweight centrifugal force, the flyweights do this. But they spin around really fast inside of this governor. And the centrifugal force, when the governor speeds up, it'll start fighting against the spring until they do that. So this part lifts up on the pilot valve and drops the pilot valve down. So there's, we could look at it very basically and say there are three positions that the uh, counterweights can be in. This is under speed right here where the spring has pressed them in. On speed where everything is in equilibrium or over speed. So what happens in the governor is it always wants to be on speed. So when you adjust the prop governor, it so I pull back on the handle and it's gonna go let's pull back on the handle. Yeah, you are going too fast. So it releases some spring tension, it lifts up the pilot valve, it's either gonna send or drain oil, we'll get into that from the prop. Prop's gonna change pitch, slow the engine down, and they're gonna come in like this, and then the pilot valve's gonna stop and block all the oil, in theory. And then if the engine starts to slow down a little bit, it's gonna drop the pilot down, oil to or from the prop, adjust the prop, the blade goes a little bit flatter and the engine speeds back up. And so it's constantly doing that just a little tiny bit to keep the prop on speed. That's its whole job. That's the only thing it knows is on speed. So you can't really say, oh, let's let it run over speed for a while. It doesn't do that. All right, so that's, that's all it is. And we can add a few little things to it, some um, uh, accessories, if you will, but like my airplane, I have a non-feathering prop. That's it. That's all it does. It looks just like this. It doesn't do anything more than that. It doesn't do anything less than that. So we can kind of... Oops. I actually want that picture back. There we go. With that. All right. Match system. Yeah, those work. Okay. Probably should put those first because they're the most simplistic ones. What we can do is talk a little bit about the propeller, the constant speed prop, and just kind of lay this out a little bit. Let's stick with a non-feathering, non-counterweighted prop. Everybody with me? So this would be something on a single engine aircraft. So let's take it through. Non-counterweighted, we got a blade. What's gonna make the blade go to low pitch? Okay, so CTF is low. CTF equals low. And what's going to make it to go to high? Okay, so that'd be oil. Oil to um, to go high. High pitch, not RPM. Follow? So knowing that, if I want to go to a higher blade angle, what is the pilot valve going to do? Send, to, send oil to the prop or drain it? There you go. So we can start right here. The pilot control that blue knob. Now we're just going to get too cold. <laughs> that blue knob, when I pull it, when I push it all the way forward, this is going to be a little difficult. Push it all the way forward. What am I telling the prop I want it to do? I want high RPM, low pitch. So CTF, low pitch. So low pitch, am I going to send oil to or drain it? Drain, drain it. All right, so I want it to go low pitch. Let me see. So low pitch um, equals drain. Is that an under speed or over speed condition that this thinks it's in? Under speed. Oh, over speed. It's trying to flatten the blades. Oh, wait, did I say that right? Um, under speed. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. Don't trust me on this. Um, under speed. So U.S. Under speed. Okay. It's going. It's it's we're, it's telling the engine you're too slow. You got to flatten this blade out. Too slow. Flatten it out. So this doesn't match the pictures, problem. So you got that. So low pitch. Drain. You're under speed. All right. So knowing that, we can look at this right here and say, okay. 
the pilot has, um, I don't worry about this that. Is yeah, right now this is in overspeed. You know that because it says it right down here, overspeed condition. So it's an overspeed condition. Follow? Mm -hmm. Because the flyweights went out. Centrifugal force on the flyweights, the flyweights, is greater than the spring pressure. So they went out because they're spinning around very fast in a little circle. Follow? Okay. So if those fly weights went out and it's in an overspeed condition, what did the pilot valve do? Drain oil or send it to prop? All right. So this one is oil to prop. Everybody follow that? It's sending oil to the prop so it doesn't have enough oil. When you send the oil to the prop, there is a piston up here that takes that oil pressure, pushes on the piston, and that drives the blade angle to a higher blade angle. Not on that one, but... What we talked about yesterday. Yes. Without counterweights. So this is all non-counterweighted. It goes backwards the other way. All right, so then we look at this one. So again, non-counterweighted type propeller, non-feathering. We just went into an... Ah, there you go. Hey, <laughs> under speed condition. We are in an under speed condition. So it is saying the engine is going to slow. slow. So the prop needs to. It's going too slow. So it's got, did you say? Decrease. Decrease. It's got to flatten out. And what force is going to cause it to flatten out? Centrifugal twisting force. So all we got to do is bleed the oil away from the prop. So you don't have a hydraulic lock, so to speak, up in the um, dome up there. So just bleed off some oil. Centrifugal twisting force will do all the rest of the work. All right, you guys are getting it. Now we're on speed. So all you have to do is take the pilot valve and block everything. No oil to the prop, no oil from the prop. In theory, it's got a hydraulic lock itself and just stay in that position. Because you've got oil up in the dome, it has nowhere to go. The centrifugal twisting force is trying to make the blade angle go back towards zero, but it can't because it's pushing the mechanism inside. It's pushing on the dome up front, the piston. The piston has got a whole bunch of oil in it, so it can't go anywhere. Well, it doesn't really work that way because there's leaks uh, because of the nature of the thing, so it doesn't do that. But you get the idea, I hope. So we can go back a little bit. Is that to say that more or less that the centrifugal twisting force is then equal to the oil pressure or the force of the oil pressure? It hydraulic locks it. Okay. And you can't move a hydraulic lock. So it's kind of like you've welded the hub, the piston inside of there. It's like stuck. So, all right, but it isn't really quite like that because these there's leakage okay. probably not leakage in the prop itself but between the governor and the prop because what it's doing is it has to take this oil pressure boost it up and shove it through the propeller or the crankshaft out the front of the prop so once you get to the front of the prop you're fine because you got o-rings otherwise you have leaks all over your windshield and then you've got tight O-rings and seals up in the dome, which I don't think really leak much. Um, I don't think they leak at all. But, and your engine is not that way. So this particular one, this is a Continental. That's the transfer collar right there. So on this particular engine, the governor mounts directly to the crankcase. The oil comes in the governor no lines, it's all internal, it's into the governor, runs to the governor, comes out a second line. So there's no hoses or anything the on this particular right. engine, yes. So the output of the crankshaft, the governor, is going to be through an oil gallery right here that comes into this piece like that. There's a little, just a little nipple like that with two O-rings on it. And it's actually, it's like that big around, it's not... I could, yeah, that opening is about the size of the pencil. It's not much bigger, a little bit bigger. And right there is that transfer collar. So it just looks like a bearing once it's installed on there. 
And so imagine you're going to have leakage out of this transfer collar, a fair amount. Because what you have underneath this transfer collar, there just happens to be one oil hole drilled inside of the crankshaft. So this right here, this transfer collar is surrounded by high pressure oil, say 300 PSI, with one hole in the crankshaft that's going to line up and spin around in there. So you pressurize that transfer collar, oil goes down that one little tiny hole and out the front of the crankshaft. When you say leak, leaks into the crankcase. Yeah, it's just going to leak yeah. down in here. So you got to make sure that you have enough pressure on there. And the governor's uh, driven right there. So there's the governor driver off the camshaft. So, so you're going to have leakage there. And I'm telling you that so you understand that and that you realize that I don't think there's any possible way that it goes on speed. And, you know, if you're flying for three hours at a set, set RPM, it's like, oh, it's been on speed now for three. It's, it's not. It's constantly probably going to find a little bit of a, um, yeah, a little micro adjustments, maybe just a little under, you know, over under speed to always be putting oil into it. Uh, that's the Continental. Uh, system. Light combing, no, oh, enlarged it there, Debbie. Uh, light combing, it, it, it's a little unfortunate that, uh, oh my God, there's so many things wrong with this picture, that <laughs> the light combing that you overhauled is one of the rare exceptions to the way light combing does their front bearings. This is the entire front bearing. You had one that went here, two, and then two that went over here. But all the other light combings use two bearings in total that goes the whole, that's one bearing, it goes from here all the way down there. And by the way, it's split um, here. The split is right there. It's actually right there. And so, I don't know, it's, it, they're, they're hard to put in. You gotta, be, that's a whole nother lecture. But, um, so what you have is the governor pressure is gonna come in like right here and there's the hole right there. So it's gonna spill out to the rest of the bearings just by its nature. But there's, a, there's, there's grooves in the bearings that kind of segment it. So, so if you think about it, it's like there's a, I don't know, we'll put like a, a barrier here and then a barrier here so that this part right here is engine oil pressure this is engine oil pressure, and this is governor pressure. And that's just going to do the same thing. It's going to travel right through that little hole, right down in, out the front of the crankshaft. All right, what is wrong with this thing that I'm looking at? Um, you guys put, what, what is this, a shoelace? You guys dental put, floss? You, <laughs> dental floss, it's, no, it's like dental floss would have been a huge improvement. Holy crap, look at that. It's like a shoelace. You guys did it. It's... Uh, yeah, uh, double lot silk thread. And, oh my why gosh. Did, why did you do that? I don't know. I just pulled this thing from the internet and there it is. Like, what else is yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They got a uh, red tag shoved in here. <laughs> well, yeah. Is there a yellow tag to the bottom? That looks like it's, I don't know what the hell happened there. And New Balance shoes, so what do you expect? So. <laughs> That's dead. That's dead move right there. All right. All right, so that's our other way it goes. All right, so we'll go through this one more time here. Let's see, we can look at this one. So engine oil comes in here. It's fed to the gears. It's always being fed to the gears. You can't turn it off. You don't want to turn it off, trust me. So all right, so it's going to boost up this pressure comes into the middle and it can go up this way. I'm not sure how this drawing's gonna work. Um, up this way to the pilot valve. Well, if the pilot valve is aligned in just the right way, drops down, it'll go through here to the prop. Okay, if it goes the other way, then oil goes from the prop through here and drains off. Uh, there's not enough pressure in the prop to do the relief valve, but it, it has that. There's a. Yeah, there should be a uh, down this way, down this way into the engine. 
uh, it's not drawn well because that when it goes down it's always going to block but it just isn't drawn correctly maybe the other one is all right so if it's right now the way it is this little disc is blocking that you follow okay so way one is engine oil gears out to prop way number two so that would be an on or under speed depending on the prop the other way on or under speed would be prop through here pilot valve drains and the third way would be if this is totally blocked off and on speed it comes up through here it goes through the relief valve and back down in here and re-enters the inside of the pump and you guys will get a chance to run this and by the way these things are obnoxiously loud. You will be shocked at how loud it is and how hot they get. It's not like you're running your little uh, Romac fuel pumps. They weren't very noisy and they ran cool. This is hot and noisy. All right. This is a little bit better picture. What I think we'll do is let your brain take a break and then we'll look at this one. Three, two. 